What are those neat blinking lights? Is that guy using an emulator? No, he's using Retro Spy. What's up my dudes? Welcome to my tutorial video on how to make a Retro Spy cable from an SNES extension cable. You're gonna need an Arduino Nano, a couple of wires, I use these DuPont Jumper Boys, and a Super Nintendo extension cable. For tools, you're just going to want to get a hold of some wire strippers, maybe a razor blade, and a bit of electrical tape. Whatever you got laying around. First, you're going to take your extension cable and cut off maybe 6 or 7 inches. This is all a personal choice, however far you want it to be from the console. You're going to end up with a male and female connector end. Go ahead and set this aside and you can discard this wire, save it for future use. Next, you'll take your wire strippers and remove the rubber sheathing to expose the wires inside. Now strip off a bit from the ends of all of the exposed wires to get at the copper strands beneath. Ow. Next, you need to identify which wire goes to which pin. Don't trust a quick Google search to tell you this because the modern extension cables could be using different colors. It only takes a moment to go ahead and use your multimeter to test all of them and be sure. Did I mention you need a multimeter that can test for continuity? You do, so go get one. I don't have a small enough probe to stick in the controller pins. The easiest way I found to do this was to jam a wire into the pin you want to verify, and then alligator clip one of your test leads to that, and then use the other probe to see which wire you're looking for. This graphic shows what each pin is assigned to, and so you're going to verify which color each one is. Go left to right and write down which color each wire is. The fifth and the sixth pins aren't used, and you aren't going to be using the 5-volt wire for your Arduino, but it is important to make sure to reconnect it while you're doing your wire twisting later, because the controller won't work without it. The four pins you need for the Retro Spy to work are the 5-volt, clock, latch, data, and ground. Now we'll start with a blank graphic, and I will identify the wires. Okay, and that's all of them, so keep this information handy, and let's move on. Now you're going to need to prepare your wires to splice into the controller. I used jumper wires since I have a bunch laying around, and they're easy to connect to the Arduino, either permanently or temporarily, depending on your application. Snip off one side, and then trim the wire to expose the copper. You're going to want to leave a male pin on one side, that way you can solder it onto the Arduino board later. Okay, now all your jumper wires are stripped and ready, and so are your two ends of your Super Nintendo extension cable. Next is an optional step to add a little bit of heat shrink tubing to your cables, that way you can make everything nice and pretty at the end. If you don't end up using it, just cut it off later. Now for the fun part, we're going to splice all these wires together. Notice we chose the same color jumper wire to make everything so simple even I can't mess it up. You can simply twist these together and then wrap them in a bit of electrical tape, or you can go for an even stronger bond and solder the wires together as well. I like to add a small piece of heat shrink tubing for added security and insulation. Here's a close-up of me reconnecting the green 5-volt wire. Remember, we're not going to be using that for our breakout. However, we do have to reconnect it so the controller works. 
This isn't a video about how to solder stuff, so I'll show you this one at regular speed, and then we'll go back to hyperspeed for the rest of the repair. That should just about do it, and now we gotta test our work. So we'll bust out the old multimeter again. Okay, all that looks good, and now we're going to go ahead and tidy up our cable and get it into its final orientation. Okay, that's all the wire splicing and cable prettying done. Now to move on to the next step, which is to go ahead and hook it up to the Arduino. Detailed instructions can be found at RetroSpy's wiki, but the idea is you match up the wires you broke out with the appropriate pin on the Arduino. Trim everything up, and then tidy up the solder and make sure everything is nice and straight. And you should be just about done. So this is it. You're looking at a finished Retro Spy Super Nintendo cable. Wow! For more information on how to get the Arduino up and running, just go check out their website. Or you can buy one directly from them already made. Now it's time to test it out and make sure everything works all right. Plug in your Retro Spy cable, and then plug in your Super Nintendo controller, and go ahead and test those out to make sure everything works before you connect it to the computer. I'm using one of the Super Nintendo test carts because it makes it very easy to visually tell whether or not your controller is functioning properly. However, you can use any game you want to test it. Yes. Now you can test out your finished RetroSpy cable with the provided RetroSpy software. This awesome tool is now ready to use. Whether you want to record tutorial videos and have a handy visual aid for button inputs, or just have another neat widget on your gaming stream, you're all set.